So what what do you believe happens when people die, Emmanuel? Um, Emmanuel, I said that right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You either pay for your sins or you either be forgiven. All right. The thing is, the Bible said God is very forgiving. It does say that, yes. In different ways and yeah. forms. So, okay. I know you're a busy guy, and I appreciate you stopping to ask questions or to talk with me. So yeah, I'm going to ask some questions, questions if you're all right with that. Yeah, there's a lot of questions I have about the Bible. It's like, all right, I, I, prob I think the Bible is basic, is basic, is basic rules on how to treat other people. I, I would agree. You could see a lot of that in there. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, but the, the whole facts about everybody get religious and everything that actually separates people. Built in a and built. Ken? And it, it, it divides people. But the Bible says we should treat other people how, how we should be treated. Yep. So why do we allow a common label divide us? You mean like difference between like Christian and Buddhist and yeah. Muslim and, and, and all of that? Why do we allow our own? Yeah. Why do we put our own thing? Yeah, I don't know how to put in words, but you know, you know exactly what I'm trying to say. Have a good day, guys. Um, well, here's here's the thing. The one of the reasons there's division between a lot of different religions are, are that Christianity is is different because because of certain things that it teaches than every other religion in the world. So, if you look at um, Islam, I don't. Are you familiar with Islam at all? No. Right, if you. If you look at if you look at Islam, Islam says you have to do certain things. You have to you have to make your Mecca. You have to you know keep the five pillars of Islam. You have to declare a jihad, and that doesn't always necessarily mean violent war. And and all these things that you have to do in Islam, so that maybe if you're lucky, Allah, the the Muslim God, will let you into paradise if you're lucky if you do everything just right um, you look at um, Hinduism has certain sets of things that you have to do and one of the things about Hinduism is it, it kind of teaches a, a type of, of, of karmic reincarnation where every time you die you're reincarnated into something based on how you lived your life before so what Christianity says, Emmanuel, is you're never going to be good enough. Nothing you ever do is ever going to be pleasing to God to a point where God will allow you into heaven because everything you do is tainted with sin. And so you said some things that were right in that we are to treat our neighbors as we treat ourselves. Um, in other words, we've heard you know the golden rule, do unto others as you would have them do unto you, right? And that comes out of the scriptures, of the Christian scriptures. And basically what, what we're being told is we're to love other people in the same way that we ourselves want to be loved and the way that we love ourselves. Now, the best, or not the best, but the greatest commandment, the number one commandment from God to humanity is we're supposed to love God above everything else. So the question that I always ask people is, do you think that you love God more than you love everything else? Or do you love yourself maybe? more often than not, more than you even love God? Um, I would like to please God, but it's like, I don't know how. The Bible tells you, oh, you gotta follow the commandments. But majority of the people that go to church don't really follow the commandments. I, you know, and I, I agree. And here's the thing, I, even as a Christian, um, who does everything that I, I can, to try and be obedient to God, I don't keep my the commandment to love God above everything else every day. There are mornings where I wake up and I'm like, man, thank you, God, for giving me breath, giving me life. But I'm still not loving him the way that I should. But see, that's the amazing thing about Christianity is God, not only does he know that we're not going to keep those commandments, he's provided a way for us to be able to, through Christ. And your name is a play on one of the names of Christ. Did you know that? Yeah, my, my parents, they're big on that. And my grandmother, everything. 
your name actually, and you probably know this already, but it's a play on Emmanuel, which means God with us. And that was actually one of the, one of the first times we hear that in the Bible is surrounding the birth of Christ, which of course is what most people right this time of year who are Christian around the world are celebrating the birth of Christ. So do you, do you know why Christ came, Emmanuel? Yeah, so um, basically he's the, he's the um, sacrificial lamb. That's right. But Not basically, he is a sacrificial yeah, he lamb. Is a sacrificial he is a perfect lamb. lamb of God. Yes, and I think we were supposed to walk in his footsteps. But that's a huge footstep. Oh, it's, and, that's, and that's the amazing thing is like, um, have you ever, how long you lived in Minnesota? Did you grow up in, yeah, up north? No, I grew up, I actually just um, moved here from California. From California? So you haven't spent a lot of time in the snow yet? Yeah. No? So one of the things that you can, sometimes you'll see in the winter uh, in places where there's a lot of snow, is you'll see a dad maybe leading his little child, his son or his daughter, through the snow. Maybe they're gonna go out and go sledding. And you'll see the dad will go ahead uh, of the of the child because he wants he's going to break through that snow he's going to make a path now that child can't on his own is never going to get through all that tall, all that deep snow and it's still a struggle for that child because that child's trying to follow in that father's footsteps and and he still has to lift up that leg really high but it's still easier and that's in a sense what Christ has done for the Christian is yes he's come ahead and he's, he's made a path for us, but that path is through the Christ. There's a passage in Scripture that says that the gate is narrow and the, and the road is straight that leads to salvation. And that, and that gate is Christ and the road is the path that he walked. And that path is, leads and ends at the cross. And that's why he came is because we can't on our own ever keep God's commandments. In Jesus... But Christ also left his own According to he left his own commandments. Um, yeah, he left his own rules. God, um, the first um, what she said with Moses, after Moses died, when Christ came, he Christ de he developed his own rules. So, well, and and I understand why you say that, but it, and, and don't take this the wrong way. It's a misunderstanding, and you know, and I, and there again, that's not meant to be harsh on you or anything. But it's a, it's a misunderstanding. Christ didn't make his own rules. What he did is he explained yeah. the Ten Commandments. And here's, and here's how Christ can, or here's why Christ can explain the Ten Commandments. Christ could explain the Ten Commandments because he is God. So he wasn't just a man. He was the God man. He was the, he's the eternal son of God. So God exists. He's one God. He's three persons, the Father, God, the Son, God, and the, not the Son, like, in this, but the God, the Son, God, the Father, and God, the Holy Spirit. Jesus is a, what we refer to as the second person of that Trinitarian God. So even though there's only one God, there's three persons. And Jesus has always been the eternal Son of God. And, it's all, and it always was planned from before God ever created the earth, Jesus was going to come to the earth. He was going to live in the flesh as a human being. He was never going to sin. And he was going to pay that perfect penalty that we cannot pay ourselves because, as you said, he's the perfect lamb of God. He's a sacrificial lamb. Scriptures say he's a lamb that was slain before the foundations of the earth. And the reason he had to die is because we're sinners. And he died for everyone who would ever believe. But we have to understand that we can we can't keep his law, and you said that there's these commandments and we can't follow them. Yeah, it seems like everything within society is directed against the Bible. Like oh, our so yeah, I would agree with you 100. percent Our our society is very much directed against the think, Bible. I think when Adam Adam ate the fruit, I think when God created Adam, He placed the word in Adam. And Say that again. When God created Adam and Eve, He basically placed the world in Adam's hands. That was just, basically, that was, I felt like that was Adam's responsibility. So well, actually, before, before, Adam, before Adam and Eve ate of the fruit, He said, be fruit, 
fruitful, mm-hmm. be fruitful and multiply and bring the earth into submission. Yeah, that was their, um, that was their, um, I guess, responsibility. Yeah, and God, and God give, give them the, the task of managing the Garden of Eden where, he, mm-hmm. where they were when he created them. And, but because of the fall, sin entered into the world and with the sin came the curse of death and destruction. And so everything then became subjected to, that, to death. All life became subjected to death, even life that doesn't sin. So plants die because of sin, even though they don't sin. Animals die because of sin, even though they don't sin. And we, we die because of sin. But the difference between us and the animals and all the other plant life is that we actually have a, a spirit and we sin. And we sin not, not just because we commit a sin. We sin because we're born sinners. And God promised that the sin nature was going to be passed on from Adam and Eve to all humanity. And so that, unfortunately, we can't escape sin unless we flee to Christ. And Christ came, lived perfectly, never sinned, ever. I mean, he had an adopted father, you know. And that was, that was Joseph. His earthly father was not his, his biological father. It was his earthly adopted father. And Jesus obeyed him perfectly, even though... He didn't have an obligation to because he actually created it was jesus whose who own words created all of humanity and so, and he obeyed mary even though mary and joseph were sinners he obeyed them he was he never never hurt anybody in the sense of just maliciously wanting to just hurt someone because he was angry at them and he wanted something from them he never had a sexual thought think about that he never had a sexual thought because he wasn't married you and I can't. You and I can't walk out of today not having a lustful thought about somebody. Sure, but <laughs> we, we can't control them. We well, I would tell you we can, but it's through bringing those thought that thought life into submission to Christ. But here's and here's the kicker for you, Emmanuel. This is going to be really heavy coming from an old white guy. <laughs> it's okay. You are never going to be able to, and you're right, never be able to control those unless you repent and believe the gospel. And I, and I tell you, because I still struggle with those, those thoughts myself, but now I hate those thoughts where I used to enjoy them. Does that make sense? Yeah. And so you, as, as young as you are, and as probably as gung-ho about girls as you can be, and I assume, I don't know, today in our society, you never know, yeah. but you, you can't... You're never going to want to escape those thoughts. That's right. You're going to want to always fulfill those thoughts. And you probably have plenty of opportunity to do it. The difference is, is that re- through repentance and faith, you're going to hate sinning against God. And you're going to not want to do it anymore. So. I'm like, I got to go. I'm going to throw fights. So, Thanks, man. Um, it, I'll be around once in a while. Check out our church. Right, no, thanks for stopping and talking with me. Especially on a, on a day like today as we get close to Christmas. Think about the birth of Christ. Huh? Thank you, sir. Have a good day, man.